Good morning all, just gone uh, 10 o'clock, it's actually about 10 past 10 and I've been up since half past 6, oh god and I, I think I fell asleep about 3 o'clock in the morning or was it after 3 o'clock and then I, I had the internet on and I was listening to something and um, oh, it, was an, you know, it just went on in the back of my head so it kept me awake really, um, didn't really sleep that much I'll make up for it later, don't you worry about that. But um, I just had a coffee and I've been working on these machines. Well, not this one. I've been working on my test deck. You know, I've got a Brenella test deck, right? Now, if you look back on the previous video, you can see it had funny head arrangement. Uh, the guy who had it, I mean, he's passed away now. I mean, this is, that's the deck. That's my little test deck. Now, he passed away a number of years ago, well, quite a few years actually, probably about 20, 30 years ago, but it was stored in the loft, and I think his daughter sold all his stuff, but um, yeah, if you look back, and you can see, look, I've replaced the head block, that's more like it, and this is all perfectly set up, uh, the head's all set up correctly, the alignment. See, the thing is, when you change a complete head block, it's the same with any tape machine, really, Revoxes, etc. You generally find that the head alignment is 100% perfect because, you know, the plate it's mounted on is perfectly aligned. And, of course, so long as those little screws haven't been touched, with, touched whatever, and it looks like they haven't. So, you know, all well and good. But, um, yeah, I couldn't leave it the way it was. What he actually did, I found that what he did after a little bit of detective work. Now there was two phono plugs coming out. And if you look back, those heads were like in skeleton form. See, the heads were actually these heads. With the, see, these have got the covers on. That's how they should be. And um, I thought one was the erase head. It wasn't. What he'd done, he set it up for playback only. But the left head was lower or higher sorry higher than the right head so in fact what he was trying to do he was trying to either record on one track while recording on the other track separately or but step then i was trying to think a stereo arrangement wouldn't work because if you got one head on the left and one on the right that wouldn't work because one of them is going to be out of sync so i think what he was doing he was trying to record on one track and record on the other track at the same time no, don't ask me why but anyway because uh, in this place here he had a stereo head on the outside there because you can have four heads on these machines but um, no I wanted it back as it was originally so uh, contacting my supplier and um, you know he supplies me all these heads and stuff like that head blocks complete head blocks the only thing you've got to do you've got to transfer the pressure plate here and it's quite easy to do the only thing you've got to remember, I mean, the the other head was in that position. Oops, I'll just play iPhone. I can never point it in the right place. All right, it was there. So what you've got to do, you've got a little uh, circlip. Take them off carefully without losing it. So I had to move it and I had to use a larger spring. I had one anyway, thank God, proper Brunel spring. And he had a short spring from there to there. So I had to extend it because the pressure pads you see because of that see they all but they're both linked together and um i think one of the original washers there should be a washer underneath to get it to the right height so the pressure pads make contact with the head exactly in alignment and that wasn't happening so i've got a box of uh washers i think i've gotten from oh, a couple of pounds for a whole load of washers and i put a couple of washers under there see just the heighting up, it's perfect now. So when I put it into play, watch what happens. It's not going to come on the electricity off at the moment. But, right, see that? Perfectly in position. When I tried it before, it's hitting the... Well, it wasn't even going in properly. But that's better. So that's what you've got to do. you always got to change that spring. Because uh, the default setting from the factory is one head over there and one head there that's the erase and that's the record record playback head but they don't put it there they put it there for some reason there must be a reason for it some technical reason to do with the pressure pads i don't know but you've got to remember to change that spring 
so I had a short one there because if you got a head right next to each other and all these pressure pads are linked you've got to have a, the use the short springs you know and the longer one for when, when there's a gap between heads but um yeah now let me put the power on so let's, let's show you all right there we go all right power's on there hopefully um i've still got to sort the record problem out on the other deck uh I've got to I've got to take all the pieces. I'm taking the amp out again, and uh, oh look, I left the screws up. Oh yeah, because I was going to take it apart again. That's why. But I've got to take the deck out. I've got to remove all this again. Oh god, and get underneath to the deck. Uh, reason why I'm doing that, um, I want to check the connections, the actual uh, head connections underneath. Um, now you know what. No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wire this up first because it's not wired at the moment. I've got the wires hanging there from the oh, from the heads. See? So I'm going to wire it properly as it should be. They go to a tag board up there. Can you see that tag board? That's where they go. And then I'm going to use some screen cable. And the best cable I found I found to use is um, CB Radio Coax RG58. So what I'll do, I'll just solder them to the tag board. And it's double-sided. you got two sets of pins and what I do I just put two cables coming out so one will be the eraser so it'll be a functional test deck because before it wasn't functional at all it was uh, <laughs> in a mess put it that way but everything works really good I mean look at that I've lubricated the motors again actually these are these have got the original AEI motors Later on, the capstan motor was fitted with a Pabst motor, a Swiss motor. The type of motors they put in, um, well, actually, the early Grundys had a Pabst motor and the Revoxes. But uh, this has got the original old AEI motors, and apparently they're indestructible, these motors. Look at that. Look how lovely. Nice, though. So what I'll do, I think I'll wire up the connections and um, I'm going to take a tapping, take one lead and put it over to the other machine again and just try to make a recording on this machine. I'll try that again. If not, there is something on the amplifier, on the other one, that's not right. One component's gone or something's up. It's not working right. It just won't record. And I've changed so many components on the other machine as well. All the caps have been done. Oh, except for two, to be honest. There's two caps I haven't changed, but they look good. They're uh, like polyester ones. I can't see them going wrong. I don't know, but maybe they are. Who knows? I really don't know. I'm a little bit stumped with the other one, to be honest. Look at this. Look at that. I've already done this a few times this morning to uh, get the motors all working well. And, uh, well, it looks like that's working well to me. And remember to stop it without destroying the tape. That's what you do. You switch over. You quickly switch the switch over from one motor to the other. And that avoids any snatchiness. It doesn't snatch. And Because if you put it to the central position to stop, there is a chance, although the brakes on this are okay, but there is a chance you could snap a tape. Which you don't want. Let's put it. Let's rewind it now. Uh, even that's going well. Oh yeah, what I did wrong. See one of the hubs over there. What I did, because the hub was slipping down, and there's two grub screws either side of the hub. So what I decided to do was put some stud lock. Bad mistake. Bad mistake. Just to hold the screw in position. I put a little bit around the thread of the screw with a toothpick. Could I get it out last night? No, I couldn't get it out. I literally stripped the uh, slot screw and I had to heat it up according to the manufacturer's instructions. Stud lock, this stuff called stud lock. Stud, yeah, stud lock, yeah. It's, um, they say you need to uh, heat it, heat the item to 300 degrees centigrade to loosen it. I mean, come on, 300 degrees centigrade. But anyway, I used a uh, desoldering tool, and that does get really, really hot. And the tip of it was exactly the size as the hole, the screw hole. Did it work? No. 
I heated up so much uh, I couldn't even hold the uh, thing anymore and I don't have a vice to put it in and I didn't want to heat it up too much because the hubs are made of alloy and you can warp them so I didn't want to do that so I've got one screw that's in I can't remove thanks to that rubbish stud lock and once so I've only got one screw actually holding the hub but it seems to be okay at the moment so I'm, I won't be doing that again do not ever use stud lock whatever you do if you've got a loose screw and you want to there we go and you're going to tighten it don't use it because I made a major mistake so anyway I've contacted my supplier to see if he's got a spare hub uh, so I have to get spare hub really but I can't get it out the only way I could get it out is use a tiny drill but I need a vise and drill out the old screw and then put in a a new one I don't know I'm not sure if it'll damage the actual thread or not uh, you know I'm not very good at uh, trying to get so <laughs> drilling out old screws and stuff I'm not really good at doing that but um, I don't know I really don't know honestly don't know but um, it's holding at the moment thank God this is only my test deck wow oh god Good job I didn't use that stuff on one of my other machines. Oh, I would have been tearing my hair out. But um, there, it seems to be holding. See, what happened before? The hub dropped and the spool was touching the deck plate. But um, it's holding on with one screw, which is really amazing. There's one either side. It's like 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. And um, I try to heat it up and I, I use the right size um, driver. So it fits in the slot exactly. But in the end, the screw gave way. I put so much strength into it, trying to loosen it. And the screw just thought, oh, I've had enough of this. And it just stripped itself. <laughs> so that's that. And I just can't get that stuff off. If I could heat it up, I mean, you know, if I didn't really care about the hub, I would heat it with a bloody blowtorch or something like that, you know. But then again, it's, it'd be ruined after that. So I don't know, if I can get a spare one, I'll just swap over the, the hub with a spare one and I'll just try to release the other one at a later date. I don't know how. I tried everything. I tried putting um, lighter fluid in the hole. I tried using uh, acetone. You name it, I tried it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't loosen it. Oh, so Harvey, do not use stud lock to tighten any screws. In actual fact, on this machine, uh, the play knob gets a bit loose sometimes and there's a screw directly underneath what I did thank god I didn't use that stud lock stuff because if it, if you ever had to take it apart well there you can't and there's that bloody stuff look at this I decanted it in a small ball a friend of mine gave me a bit stud lock look stud lock it's the green stuff don't ever use that unless you never want the screw to come out ever but uh, what I did on this I just put a spot of paint bit of that humbrol paint you know the paint used for a model aircraft and it seems to have held it so it's fine that that movement there that's just the knob it's worn out that's all it is but it goes into play fine there we go then it goes back it's fine so the uh, paint seems to have held it but thank god i didn't use that stud lock on this thank god oh my god that is strong stuff I mean, I bought this the other week. I saw Graham on Radio Crunch who used this. Now, if you're watching this, Graham, can you let me know if you can actually take the screw out again with ease? Or is it like stud lock where you need to heat the screw to 300 degrees centigrade? If anyone knows, please let me know before I start using this stuff. Oh, God. There we go. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. So as I said, uh, I spent nearly two hours, I think two and a half hours last night, trying to get that screw out, and it just would not budge. Would not budge at all. So I think once I get a spare hub, if my supplier's got one, I'll just drill this one out. I'll get a vice off somebody, or I'll go to somebody's house who's got a vice, proper desk vice, you know, one of those big ones. Clamp it, and slowly try to drill it out, and you never know. Put it on reverse uh, reverse function after you drill it and it might just pull it out i don't know maybe so but uh, i need another one first before i can mess about with this hub i don't want to ruin this one otherwise the decks just, i won't be able to use it it'd be useless so there we go that's what i've been doing at least i've done the head block anyway 
and the one screw has held it in position so oh god it's all a learning process isn't it anyway but i'm becoming really good with brunels i'm becoming quite an authority i think i must say so myself uh, but if anyone wants to change the head block and you need instructions just go to the about section on my page and email me and i'll explain in detail how to do it i can't do it live you know like do it live because i need a camera tripod and all that and you know but it's not it's not hard i mean if i can do it anybody can do it all right <laughs> i'm not putting myself down but you know it's not it's not the hardest of things to do at all it's not the hardest seriously um just a bit of common sense that's all you need right turn the power off for the here now okay and that's it so that's what i've been doing so far so i think what i'm going to do i'm going to grab half an hour of sleep and then i'll have some breakfast because it's come up to half past 10 now and i'm feeling really tired oh my god as usual harvey doesn't get enough sleep that's what it is well there we go further update i just want to get this machine recording i want it to record for christ's sake what is going on the components i've changed on this you would not believe as i said i've got two more capacitors to do and i think i'll get those done after i've had something to eat a little sleep something to eat and i'll take the amp out again and uh, i'll change those other two capacitors whether they're good or not i'm going to just change them anyway just future proof it i'll change two resistors two resist one of them was shorted um it was showing 3.6 ohms when it should have been 10 ohms well out of tolerance and another one in circuit i should have desoldered one of the legs but it should have been 100k and was it 100k or was it a thousand 1k 1k sorry and when i took it out it was reading 1k and 6 so 1006 so it was all right in the end but i put a new one there anyway what the hell i mean resistors are so cheap cheap as chips you know you might as well just change the damn things if if one of them suspect, just change it. What the hell? And there we go. Right, I'm going to grab half an hour of sleep if I can. I'll try. If not, I'll have something to eat and then sleep later on. And then uh, do this later. Oh, God. There we go. All right, then. Uh, that's it. That's all I want to say, really, for now. I shall catch you all later. Bye for now.